Hi there everyone. So just looking at a small topic in calculus called differential calculus, we're going to be finding the derivative using the rule. Now, if you guys forgot what this rule is, I'm just going to write it over here. And this rule states that if y is equal to x to the power of n, then the derivative of y will be um, n times x to the power of n minus 1. So there's two things happening here. First of all, the n is being multiplied with whatever is in front of that x. And then also the exponent n is being decreased by 1. Okay, so those are the two steps that we need to consider. Now with that, let's tackle these questions. For question 1, we have y is equal to 5 minus x. Okay, so when we're differentiating with respect to x, the terms that doesn't have an x, they just become a 0. So this 5, that becomes 0. So I'm not going to write anything there. And then for the x, remember the exponent is 1. So we multiply the 1 with a negative 1 in front. That leaves us with negative 1. Um, and since we're decreasing this exponent by 1, it then becomes x to the power of 0, which is also 1. And 1 times this negative 1 stays that. So I'll just leave it as negative 1. In short, if there's an x with the exponent 1, or if there's a number in front of the x with the exponent 1, then the number in front of the x remains and the x falls away because eventually it becomes x to the power of 0. So that's the gradient for this function. Let's do the next one. The derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so actually before I take the derivative of this function, I first want to write it in a different way. So I'm going to write that as 2 times x to the power of negative 1. I'm basically taking this x to the power of 1 to the top and then it becomes negative 1. Okay, that's one of our exponent laws. So what happens now is we take the derivative by multiplying the exponent with the number in front, then minusing that exponent by 1. So we have negative 2, that's the negative 1 times the 2, to the power or x to the power of negative 2. That's this negative 1 minus another 1. So that gives us negative 2. Now you can write this in a better way, perhaps like this, negative 2 over x squared. Again, I'm just taking the x um, to the power of negative 2. I'm taking that to the bottom and you can see it becomes positive now, the exponent law. Okay, let's do the next one. So for question 3, we have the third. Now first I want to express the third in a better form so that it's easier for me to take the derivative. So we're going to have x to the power of a half. The square root x is written as x to the power of 1 over 2. That's simply the exponent on the inside divided by the root. Okay. Now um, we take the derivative as per normal. So we have the exponent of half being multiplied in front, then we minus 1 from that exponent, x to the power of negative half. Then also we're going to add, um, I guess, this exponent to the front, so that's 2x to the power of invisible 1, okay, because 2 minus 1 is just 1. Okay, let's continue. Uh, here we're first going to multiply out. I want to... Um, square these brackets. So when you square them, you end up with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Don't just square the x and square the 1. Also remember to double the product of the two terms inside the bracket. Okay, now we can take the derivative. The exponent 2 multiplied in front and then the exponent minus 1. Remember this is just a uh, a number with an x, so the number remains and the x falls away because it becomes x to the power of 0. The constant that doesn't have an x, that just becomes 0. Question 5, we have y equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1. This is difference of squares, so we can multiply this out by just squaring the first term, which becomes x squared, and then because it's difference of squares, we put a minus in the middle, and you square the last term, which is 1. Okay, so that's it. Now we can uh, differentiate this. 
so the derivative of y with respect to x um, x squared the derivative of that is 2x and the negative one because it's a constant just falls away so that's our final answer question 6 y is equal to x plus 1 the derivative of this is just the invisible one that's in front of the x okay and the plus 1 which is a constant also becomes 0 if we look at the next one it's the same thing the number in front of the x is just 1 and the constant negative 1 falls away now I want you to notice something here question 6 uh, the equation is x plus 1 and for question 7 it's x minus 1 even though these are different equations the derivative is still the same that's because derivative is simply gradient so these lines although they have different y-intercepts they still have the same gradient okay Question number eight. Here we first need to simplify this bit. Okay, here is still some multiplication going on, so we need to do that first before we take the derivative. I'm going to do that by simplifying this third. So the cube root of eight is two, and the cube root of x to the power of six is x squared. Let's simplify this further. Two times two is four, and x times x squared is x cubed. Now we can take the derivative. The exponent multiplied by the number in front is 12 and the exponent minus 1 gives us 2. So 12x squared. Question 9. As you can see the question is getting slightly harder. We now have y equal to 5x squared minus 4x over x. So first we're gonna have to divide these two terms by x then we're going to differentiate. So 5x squared divided by x is just 5x and 4x divided by x would just be 4. And the derivative of 5x minus 4 is 5. So your answer is 5. For the next one we have 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 over x squared. Let's first prepare this one. So I'm going to write that as 2 times x to the power of negative 2. Bring the x squared to the top so the exponent becomes negative. Nothing else in this equation changes so we write it down the same. Then we move on to the next step which is to take the derivative. So 2 times 3 is 6 and then you minus 1 by that. This is just 6x so we just take the number in front of the x and then here we multiply the negative 2 with a positive 2 which gives us negative 4 and then we deduct 1 from that negative 2 which then gives us an exponent of negative 3. Okay. Question 11. We again have difference of squares. x plus 2 over x, x minus 2 over x. So we're going to square each term and put a minus in the middle. x squared is x squared minus in the middle, 2 over x squared becomes 4 over x squared. Let's bring this one to the top to prepare it for the derivative. x squared, the derivative of that is 2x. Negative 2 times negative 4 gives us positive 8. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. For the next one, again we're dividing both terms by this x. x squared divided by x is just x. Negative 3 divided by x uh, can be written as 3 times x to the power of negative 1. Now this is what we should differentiate. The derivative of x is just 1, the number in front of the x. The derivative of this, uh, we're going to take the negative 1 and multiply it by the negative 3. That gives us a positive 3. Then we minus 1 from that exponent, so we get negative 2. For question 13, we have y equal to 3ax plus a squared. Now, remember, we are differentiating x. We're taking the derivative of y 
with respect to x. That means we only care for the exponents of x, not the exponents of a, or any other variable for that matter. So let's consider x and its exponent, which is 1. We multiply that by the 3a, so it stays 3a, then we minus 1. So basically, like we did for the others, the thing in front of the x remains, and the x to the power of 1 kind of just disappears, because it becomes x to the power of 0, which is 1, and there you go. For this term, which is ax squared, that's a constant, okay, because there's no x, and therefore that just becomes 0. For the next one, we have x equal to 2y plus 4x squared. You are finding the derivative for y with respect to x. So you need to make y the subject of the formula. I'm going to do that by taking the 4x squared to the other side. So we have x minus 4x squared equal to 2y. Secondly, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. So the 1x becomes a half x. You're dividing the 1 by 2. Then the 4 uh, becomes 2. Or the negative 4 becomes negative 2. Okay, you divide both sides by 2. Now we take the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is just the half, the x disappears, and then um, 2 times negative 2 is 4, and that becomes x to the power of invisible 1. Now for the last question, we first need to multiply these brackets out. Now, I already know the result of multiplying all of this, so I'm just going to write that in. It's x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. Now, I didn't just memorize this result, but I actually derived it from the binomial theorem, which is very closely related to Pascal's triangle. And x to the power of 3 comes from this triangle. I'll explain that perhaps in another video for another day. But if you don't believe me, take this x plus 2 to the power of 3 and multiply it all the way out. So you'd have to write it out three times and then multiply the first two brackets. Once you have a solution for that, multiply it with the last bracket and then hopefully you end up with this as your final answer. Anyways, now that we know that this is the answer, we can take the derivative. The derivative for y with respect to x is going to be 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 and the 8 disappears. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you feel like I went through some of these examples too quickly, check out my other video where I also do more differential calculus using the rule.